I started to see a lot of different defenses and how people played me um, specifically. After that game, every team we played went their route to face guard me, uh, box and one, and just made sure to try to take me out of the game. I haven't seen that or felt that uh, since I probably was in high school, and um, it just, I feel like it just made me a better player because I had to you know, be strategic at this point on how I could get the ball, how I could touch the ball, and also you know, be productive for my team and try to help them win without you know, forcing shots either. I'm Tiffany Mitchell. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina in the United States. I've been a professional basketball player for eight years in the WNBA. Now I came to Egypt to play with Greg from Rwanda. The decision was kind of last minute. I've been playing year round for years, so this was the only time that I kind of had to kind of just take for myself, um, to work out, to kind of just take a mental break, a physical break, give my, my body a break. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to play in Africa, uh, get back to my roots, see something different. Um, and I think it, I mean, it was a good choice for sure. I only trained and practiced with the team maybe a week before uh, us coming to this tournament. So it was really quick on the fly. Um, had to learn plays, had to learn, you know, people on the team, the, my teammates, the coaches. We have a young team, um, inexperienced, and I think, you know, they brought myself over and Nia over, DP over, with people who had experience to kind of help and bridge that gap. I mean, I think a huge part that people don't realize when Americans come and play on different teams in different countries is the language barrier. You know, everything is, it happens so fast, um, so it's hard to, you know, communicate in the moment. The whole team speaks one language and you input 
two people that don't speak that language is going to make a difference. Red came into this competition with a roster that I didn't really know. There was only one name that stood out to me and that was Destiny Philoxy. So if you watched Afro Basket 2023, her and Roberts were a big part of the reason why Rwanda came fourth in the competition. And not only did they come fourth, but to me, they spurred on a new generation of women playing basketball in Rwanda. We got to see how much Rwanda loves women's basketball. And I think also Destiny, becoming a naturalized player, got to see how much Rwanda loved her. I didn't expect it to be that supportive. Um, I've learned how supportive Africa is from Afro Basket this summer. And from that point on, I loved Africa. So now that I'm back and I'm playing again and representing Rwanda, uh, I feel at home and I feel really loved. And I feel like that's what African basketball in general is about. I love that hair, go. Coming into this competition, I would have told you there were two contenders. The reigning champions, Sporting Alexandria, they already had the reigning MVP in Haga Amit. And then they had Sierra Dillard, who was one of Afrobasket 2023's All-Star 5. So we're looking at a stacked roster already, not even to talk about Destiny Pitts or Yassine Diop. We knew what they were bringing to the table. So to me, the second contender is Interclub. Interclub has Christine and Itali. If we talk about veterans of the African game, these two women are weapons that I don't know how many other teams have someone who can battle with them. Yeah, I think Interclub kind of set the tone on how people played me. Uh, they played me a lot harder. They played me a lot more physical. But my team was, of course, very supportive on me trying to just do what I can um, with how they were playing me. I remember checking my phone when the news was dropped that Reg had signed WNBA players. Now, let's be clear, all the content creators, the journalists, all of us were just losing our mind. Everyone is just messaging each other going, sorry, how did this happen? Where did this come from? We knew that Reg wanted to make a statement. We didn't understand how they were gonna do that. So when you now add Mitchell and Clouded to their roster, it changes the game. Now they're contenders. Before they were participants. Now we can see they, they were aiming to go for that title. That's what they wanted. The WNBA and the AWBL are two very different competitions, two very different styles of play. And you're playing with women who, who 
they go all out. So I, I just don't know if they were mentally and physically ready for the African game. To be honest, prior to coming, I probably did zero type of research before. Learning about African, you know, the culture of basketball was not talked about a lot. It's either you're in the W or you're in Europe. Knowing that, you know, Africa is actually a place that you can play in, I don't think other people know. You know, they're going to get after it. You know, if you're down 40, they were still full press, picking me up the whole court, and they're losing my 40 points. <laughs> I've never seen that, literally, ever in my life. But they never let up, and I admire that. I mean, Angola and Inner Club and, and our pool gave us a good run for our money in the beginning, so I'm like, okay, like this is what you know a top team feels like. So we knew when I got to KPA, the feel is going to be like how we played with Inner Club. I just don't think that we knew enough um, going into that game. Um, we got down early, and uh, again, we beat everybody previously by more than 20 points, so we never felt that. And I think it was hard to kind of, you know, mentally understand what was going on. It's like, okay, we're losing. We never felt that the whole tournament. This was the first time that we ever got down, or were down at halftime. So I think it was kind of like a shock to everybody. And I've been on teams where, you know, we can start the game losing all the time, but never in my mind do I ever think I'm going to lose a game. Of course, with us, Nia, you know, DP being some of the more experienced players, like we kind of had to pull people together um, and let them know, like, you know, we're still in this game. And I think, I think that's what we showed. You know, we fought all the way back. I think we were down 15, 20 at one point and, you know, cut the lead to two. We struggled in the post for sure. So I felt like anybody we played, that had pretty dominant post players or big post players, we we're gonna have you know, our, our work cut out for us. KPA came in with a strategy. They had a plan, they did their scouting, they understood who their opponents were, and they took down two WNBA players. Let's call a spade a spade. So if we know that now, how does that change the landscape of women's basketball moving forward? How does the AWBL keep us improving at club level, which then feeds into national level, what do we need to do? What do clubs need to do? What do players need to do 
to improve the standards for these women who are playing this competition day in, day out. Having tournaments like this, you know, in Africa, um, I think it definitely helps, you know, the visibility of African basketball players. So I think this tournament was great to just kind of just show, you know, different countries, different types of people, different experiences, um, bringing us all together and just showing, you know, women who are just inspiring and want to play basketball at a high level. I think there's a lot of people that are working to make women's basketball in Africa a success. It's going to take time, it's going to take effort, it's going to take dedication uh, and hard work, but we're putting in the work. What's important to remember is these women are athletes, and so they should be treated like athletes. We work hard so that these women get the recognition they deserve, they get the payment they deserve, and they get the titles they deserve. So if we all keep that in mind, I, I think African women's basketball just continues to grow. It continues to be a success and we continue to inspire the next generation to do bigger and better than we did. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but just knowing like what they have to go through compared to what I'm used to, um, it's completely different. And knowing like, you know, some of the things that I think is just second nature, like they have to fight for. Just seeing them and being around them and talking with them and just knowing how much they sacrifice, you know, to try to be a professional athlete and to compete in tournaments like this makes me appreciate, you know, what they have to go through and it's inspiring.